Hey everybody, Hal Weeks coming to you from in front of Daigle Auto Harps in sunny SeaTac, Washington, where of course the machines are rolling and the planes are flying and we're just going to work through any potential noise. Uh, this is actually the second time I made this video because the first time, time I did it there wasn't any audio recorded. So this time we're getting the audio. I'm excited today because I am going to show you two historic models of auto harps. The actually sort of the very first line of auto harps. These go back to 1894 folks and it, I'm going to show you the smallest one and the biggest one. So stick around because I'm going to show you and play for you the concert grand grandy auto harp. <laughs> and uh, but first we're going to start with this little bitty guy. This is the model, model two and three quarters um, Zimmerman auto harp. I'm going to bring it in close so that you can see the label. This is 1894. That's what 130 years, 130 some odd years. I'm not doing the math. You can do the math because by next year when you're watching this video it'll be a year longer. So by not saying I don't have to be held accountable to my poor math skills. Um, this one is uh, one of the first auto harps that they ever made uh, at the Zimmerman Company. It's a little bitty thing. It's only got 20, what, 23 strings. Um, and uh, it is actually diatonic, two keys, uh, not double strings the way our diatonics are these days, but we've come a long way. And you'll know that when you hear it. <laughs> so this thing was never meant to be played upright the way we do now. It was played down flat. So I'm going to put it down flat and then move my camera so that you can see what's going on with it. I've got it on the glass because that actually resonates the tone better than the the uh, foam pad that usually sits here. Um, so it sat tabletop and uh, it was played, get this, I've got the original pick plectrum for the finger which was like a spring Boing, boing. And the thumb pick, which was felt, held in a metal clip like this. On the harp is the Zimmerman numbering system. And the auto harps of the, those days was really a device to sell the numbering system to you. Because if you wanted to play a bunch of songs that were tabbed out, what we say now, for the auto harp, you had to buy their music. And their music was all written out. Here's a method book. It was all written out in this numbering system like this. So it was play by numbers and they give you the numbers right here on the harp. Well, the music, the sheet music didn't last, didn't catch on, but the auto harp did, and boy did it. Um, so anyway, what does it sound like? Well, first of all, it's very difficult to tune. This one has brand new strings. I just put them on, got it all cleaned up or as much as possible. Um, and so the strings are nice and new. They sound nice and new. And here's what it sounds like got five chords in two keys, key of C and key of F. It has no minors. There's the C chord. Whoops. Gotta get used to this pick. I'm not that fond of the thumb pick. I can barely hear it.
very quiet. I prefer my own thumb pick and finger pick, but you'll see that it makes it sound harsher because they're so uh, so stout. So if I use these and then play more gently. Tuning's a little ripe. The strings are very short, and that makes them very difficult to get spot on. And then, of course, they're new strings, and so they pull out pretty quick. So there you go. That's the model two and three quarters from 1894. Now let's meet its big brother. Ha! This thing is a beast. Never meant to be played upright. I would probably hurt myself. Wow, I could actually do that. <laughs> kind of crazy, kind of large. 48 strings, four complete 12-note chromatic octaves. I'll show you how thick it is. And uh, this thing is a beast because it's got 60, uh, 60 plus chords. Um, about 60, well, 63, counting the, the uh, diminished sevenths. But the diminished sevenths have, there's only three diminished sevenths possible, but they ha each have about four different names. So uh, you do the math. And I'm going to show you how we get so many chords out of just six chord bars. Again, this is a tabletop instrument never meant to be played upright. Um, and the secret to this is these chord bars, which produce multiple chords um, because they have sliders that move. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Each has, produces six different chords um, because we have chord one, and then we push this slider up, chord two. We pull this slider down, that's chord three. And we do both of them, that's chord four. Did I say six? I think I did. Uh, four chords, but then you can do this too. Boom, like that. Now everything, this, this was the uh, G chord, I believe. Here's the C chord. The C chord, you push it this way, Oh, it is already up. Wait a minute. Like that, and it becomes a C sharp. Back this way, it becomes a C flat or a B. And they all shift like that. These shift better. This one's not shifting that well. We're going to have to take a look at that. And so, if you've got one, two, three, wait. One, two, three, four positions times two, three. That means 12 possible chords on this one chord bar times one, two, three, four, five. 12 times five, and then this one is the diminished seventh bar. And you push it this way. And you push it this way. So that one, does, the sliders don't do anything on this one. And I've made other videos, and we'll put those in with this video, um, about how these chord bars work so that you can see them uh, removed from the mechanism so you can see the pads sliding around as I do that. So I just wanted to show you what one of these 
bars off of the concert grand looks like close up. First of all, notice how long is this thing? This thing is probably about 18 inches long, uh, I'm guessing. But, I mean, here's a long-handled tuning wrench. Here's a shorthand, or a T tuning wrench. And there's the cord bar. So, one, two, I'm doing all this with one hand, two, three, four of these, whatever that is, which looks to be about six inches, um, five inches. So, um, that tells you how long these are. And then each cord bar from the top, it doesn't look like much, but it's got these two levers and those levers connect to all this <laughs> orthodontia, that's what I'm calling it, that runs up and down the side of each bar and each one is mounted in little loops and has a little spring. So it's quite elaborate and this, this lever, as you can see, shifts some of the dampers so that the in some cases they move the um, a, a pad in to damp what wasn't damped and it moves something that was damped out of the way and that happens up and down and that all has to be adjusted perfectly for the strings where they sit on the harp in this particular stringing because they can move slightly and you want them in a specific spot so you have to adjust each of these little movable pads and there's another one on the other side but at this end there is this setup which is three notches the auto harp has a um, little uh, wall on it or, or divider or something that this can sit here or here or here and that shifts all of these available cords into one, two, three different positions. So what does it sound like? Well, it's got a huge big fat sound but for all of its its elegant mechanism and its obvious beauty, it really, I don't think it sounds all that good. One of the problems is that these are so long and you're only pushing in this one place, they're, the strings aren't damped up here or down here. And so if you want to play up there, you have to do this. I'm pushing here and here. Kind of crazy, kind of awkward. And uh, um, so handling this harp is a little bit like driving a truck. Um, and uh, that's probably why they didn't catch on. I think these retailed for about $250. Um, and back in those days, that was a lot of money. Um, so, but let's see if I can pull something out here. Let's see.
Okay, Let's see if I can do that better. I'm gonna do it again. Somewhere in here, you get the seventh. There it is, with the lever. One, one, seven, four, four, seven. So I'm pushing up the lever to make the seventh. That's not too hard. So what does this one do? It turns it into a minor. So we've got C, C minor, which actually belongs to a totally different key. So there you have it. A little bit of fun with the Zimmerman Concert Grand, also 1894-ish. There's only about 30 of these, 30 to 40 in the world. Uh, many have not survived um, the ravages of time. Um, and uh, so this one has been now restored by Daigle Auto Harps for a museum somewhere. We had to put all new strings on it, provided by... Greg Schreiber, and uh, new tuning pins, uh, which of course look beautiful, and we had to get it so that they would hold their tune. We had to tighten all the holes up, shim them, so that they would uh, squeeze down on the, the pins the way they're supposed to. Um, the top was sunken in, collapsed. We had to bring it up. Pete did all this work. Um, I just strung it and played it for you here. Um, Pete is the, uh, the wonder worker behind this whole restoration. There you have it. That's the um, Zimmerman Concert Grand Auto Harp. I hear the saws in the back are turning on, and so that's gonna get really annoying on my video. So I'm gonna say goodbye from Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. I'm Hal Weeks. Hey, if you like this programming and this is interesting to you, why not? become a contributing member help keep me keeping on go over to patreon.com slash howweeks and kick in a few bucks a month just to keep me interested and uh, keep me keep me flying and uh, keep this programming going out to um, to everybody and uh, you'll be a a member of the community in more ways than one then a valuable contributor to this programming which is a lot of work on our part so thanks for watching I'm Hal Weeks we'll see you next time bye bye